today I want to show you how to uh, disassemble the MDXS on demand grinder. Uh, you would be doing this if you had to uh, unjam the grinder, if something is jamming the burrs, or if you want to go ahead and change the burrs on your own. It is pretty simple to do on this grinder. Uh, first we want to turn off the power and unplug the unit. So I'll get out of your way. And then we will shut the beam collar off. Wait, hold on, let me come, come down in. Okay. So we just pull that towards us, that shuts the beams off, and now we can lift our collar up and out of place. Go ahead and put that in a box or put your beams away. It's also a good idea to go ahead and one, at least once a week, empty your beams out of this, put them back into a bag and then wipe this container out. Of course, if you have really an oily roast or you know beans that are very oily, you might want to do that more often so that you keep this hopper nice and clean. Another area that you're always going to want to pay attention to is to go ahead and vacuum out the throat of the grinder. Uh, you will find that coffee oils will build up inside this wall here and, and going down into the burr area. <clears throat> of course, every coffee is different on how it builds up. If you have, a, here again, a real oily bean then. So to have access at your grinding burrs, there's just two screws here. And we're going to lift this. Got to get my screws completely loose, lift this and then turn it to the side. There we go. You can remove the screws. The next item we're going to want to remove is our top uh, grinding burr holder plate. Usually I use a, a bigger Phillips for this. They're pretty snug, huh? Yes, yeah, so from the factory, they are, are very snug. And there is no reason to have them this tight on there. Uh, so these screws are on there extremely tight. You want to make sure that you have the right Phillips that fits in there. So that's, that's what I have is a, a number three Phillips that fits that Phillips screw. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a wrench on there and put a lot of downward pressure in. There we go. Nice. Okay. And of course, there's no reason for them to be that tight in there. And now we can just lift that out of there, clean our burrs up, vacuum all of that out, and then reassemble. So obviously if you have something jammed in there, you will see that. You'll see, you know, sometimes we get a rock through a roast or some of the, the fine brushes that sweep the coffee as the coffee is cooling get through there. Uh, we found staples, nails, all sorts of stuff that come through in there, screws. Wow. Uh, of course, if you were going to change your burrs at this time, you would vacuum all of that out and each burr, Top and bottom has three screws holding them down. You want to make sure that when you change the burrs, that the surface that the burr is going on there is nice and clean. You don't want to be mounting your burr on top of coffee or a dirty surface. Gotcha. And then screw it all back together. Okay. And of course, this just goes back on there like so. Of course, when you put the screws in there, do everything evenly. I'm just going to barely snug, then a little bit more all the way around. And then, of course, tight, not super tight the way they had it. 
A nice thing about this grinder is if you notice that everything that I've done, I have not touched the, the grind adjustment at all. So usually if you just are, are doing a simple uh, taking it apart because something got in there and jammed the burrs and putting it back together, you're not having to mess uh, go all the way down to bottom and then back it out to where it was, assuming that you marked it. If you didn't mark it, then of course you're going to have to start from scratch adjusting your grind. That's on a different grinder. This grinder, you don't have to do nothing. You're at the same grind that you were before. Nice. Ready to go. And then push that forward to open it up and you're good to go. Thank you.